What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon ADC, and today we're taking a look at the Wubin X2. It's a powerhouse of a flashlight, especially when you take into account its small size. This is 3.35 inches long by about 1.55 inches wide and 0.8 inches thick. Weighs in at 4.06 ounces and has a maximum output of 2500 lumens in its turbo mode, which is really impressive for this size. Now, if the maximum output is the most important factor for you, you want that 2500 lumens, I would go with this black aluminum finish, which is $98, although I do have a coupon code for their website, which is Uncommon20, will save you 20% on any of the models, not just this one. But the reason I say that is, the black aluminum model is the only one that has Osram P9 LEDs in it, and there are three of those, and that has the max output of 2,500 lumens. Every other one, including the white aluminum, the titanium versions, any other finish you get is gonna have Samsung LH351D LEDs, still three of them, but those have a max output of 1,800 lumens. And that is a pretty significant difference, 700 lumens. That difference is the same as the maximum output of our Wubin X3, and this is in that same series. This has a turbo mode of 700 lumens, and so the difference between those two LEDs is pretty significant. Now, kind of ironic too that the least expensive option at $98 is the most powerful in terms of overall lumen output. And so either way though, I think 1800 is plenty for most people. So if there's a finish that you prefer, you can still go with that. The other modes are all very, very comparable. It's just that turbo mode where you see a significant difference. So this does have a 2000 milliamp battery in here that's USB-C rechargeable. Now, they don't recommend disassembling it. You can access that battery through four screws here on the back. And it does look like it's two 14500 batteries just kinda in a pack. So I don't know if you could replicate that yourself or if you do have to get them from them, but it, when those do eventually die, you can replace those fortunately. And so you do have access to those. Now, We'll get into the modes first, I guess. So really easy operation on here. I mentioned actually USB-C rechargeable. So this is our switch, but it's also our dust cover or water cover for that IP68 water and dust proof rating. So if you pull that up, instead of pushing it down, you do have access to your USB-C port. It's all sealed shut with magnets. <clears throat> and then that little indicator light shows the charging when it turns blue when it's done. That's also our indicator light to show battery levels <clears throat> while operating this flashlight. And so single click gets us into our main modes. It looks like I left off on something higher than low. There we go, let's get into our low. So our low mode is five lumens, and of course it does have a memory mode as we saw. That'll last for about 80 hours. This is gonna preserve your night vision. Doesn't throw very far, about five meters, but works really well in low light environments. Doesn't make that much of a difference in these high light environments. So. Now to cycle through, you can just hold that button for about a second and it, that will cycle you into the next mode. So now we're in our medium. This is 100 lumens, lasts about 10 hours, throws about 25 meters or so. And that's getting significantly brighter. Now we jump all the way up to 400 lumens with our high mode. This will last for about two and a half hours and throw for 55 meters. Now those are the only modes we can cycle through. We can turn this off and stay in our memory mode with that high mode the next time we turn it on. We can also access turbo mode directly from there if we'd like by double tapping that and that will jump us into our turbo which is that 2500 lumen output. Really, really bright, super hot and that'll last for about a minute before stepping down to 800 lumens and that lasts for another hour. Now this 2500 lumens will throw about 146 meters so a pretty significant throw on there as well. Now let's click that off. You can cycle from there too. If you just hold on to it, it'll cycle back into your regular cycle. And I really like the step down on this. I mentioned it in the last flashlight review I did that I don't like when the step down goes to lower than the high mode because you're using turbo because you felt like high mode wasn't enough. And so it kind of defeats the purpose if you have 45 seconds of that turbo and then it drops down to less than what you were getting out of your high mode. So this case, it drops down to 800 lumens, which is great because our high mode is only 400 lumens, and so we're still getting double the output out of our turbo mode even after the step down, which is really nice. Now, it does have a strobe and an SOS mode, which you can get into by triple clicking. I'm not gonna do that. Just preserve your vision and my vision, but that is a thousand lumen strobe mode. It does come in lockout mode, which is quadruple clicking, 
four rapid clicks locks you out and then four rapid clicks does unlock it. They put a sticker on there, it comes locked, so they do put a sticker on there in the box, you know how to unlock it. Sometimes flashlight companies don't do that and you think you just got a broken flashlight until you read the manual for the lockout feature, but all pretty simple operation in my opinion. It all feels very familiar. A lot of flashlights use a similar operating system. Now, in terms of the battery, I don't know that I really showed that. So when you click this, there's a light that goes on and it's a blue light right now. That constant blue light will last for about five seconds before it goes off, as you see. And when that happens, you know that we're charged over 90%. I just charged this for this video, so we're over 90%. If that blue light is flashing, that could be anywhere from 40 to 90%, which is a pretty large range. But once it drops to red, you know you're under that 40% threshold. And then when the red light starts flashing, you're under 15%. And so pretty easy to tell exactly where you are. Once it starts flashing, you're probably going to want to get it on a charger sooner than later. Now, other features on this flashlight, I like the shape of the body. I've really been digging rectangular shaped flashlights and the button itself is flush with the body. And so not the easiest to accidentally press, but it definitely doesn't take that much pressure. So it can happen. So you want to make sure you lock it out because if you get into turbo mode, that's throwing off quite a bit of heat. And I could imagine that burning through cloth or burning your skin if it's making contacts. You want to make sure you're locking that out, even though it's not the easiest to press. Some buttons, if they are over the threshold of the rest of the handle, are even easier to press, but this one's still not that difficult. We do have a pocket clip, which I like the placement. If this is in your right pocket, for example, and you pull that out, your thumb's already on the button ready to go, and this is a mode that you're going to be using it in most cases you'll see that the orientation is different than our X3. You can also, I guess, see the size difference between the X2 and the X3. And so the orientation is the exact opposite. And that's pretty intentional, I'm sure. This one, like I said, is pretty natural. You pull it out of your pocket and ready to go. With this one, it's the opposite because it's small enough that you might clip this to your hat, but also because the head rotates on this one. It does not rotate on the X2. And now that pocket clips in the orientation that you can clip it to a shirt pocket, your backpack strap, whatever the case may be, and it will still be pointing forward. And so that's a very intentional choice. I don't really think I miss the two-way pocket clip or having this mounted the other way. It's definitely getting to that size, even though this is still pretty small, that this isn't really one that I'm gonna be clipping to my hat anyway. It does have a lanyard hole here, which is nice and out of place. It's Tucked away in the corner, you might not even notice it, but there is a lanyard hole here in the corner. Like the placement of that too, your lanyard will be kind of sticking out of your pocket right here if you want it to be with that clip there. And it's not really sticking out or protruding anywhere. So I do like the placement of that. And last thing is accessories that come in the box. When I did the X3, I forgot to show the wrist lanyard, which is actually a pretty important thing. So I wanna make sure I show the accessories. We'll start with this one though. <clears throat> Red diffuser just slides right on the top. Really easy operation there. And you can use all of your modes here. So in these lower modes, this is gonna preserve your night vision. In the turbo, it's still pretty bright. I could see using this for signaling. And so this is almost like a beacon. You're used to seeing white light. And when you see someone waving red light back and forth, that's gonna get your attention. And so this is really bright and really visible from far away. Now it's not throwing very far, but that red light just moving will catch people's attention. But it's obviously diffusing the light quite a bit so we don't get as much throw out of that red light. Now. Outside of the diffuser, we also get a neck lanyard. And so I think on the X3, it was actually a wrist lanyard. So you do get different sizes of these. And so I didn't really pay much attention because I don't usually use the lanyards that come with the lights. But if you click on to the end here, this is actually your charging cable. So you have your USB on one side, your USB-C on the other, and those slide right back in there. And you can wear this as a neck lanyard. You can put your badge on it or whatever you might want. This is removable. So if you don't like this attachment, you can attach a regular key ring or whatever the case may be. Other cool feature about this is it actually has a centimeter ruler on the inside. And so I'll show the end of it here. You can see we have 80 centimeters here, which is a pretty cool little extra to have on you. Although again, I'm probably still not gonna wear this as a neck lanyard. I may throw it in my bag and it's cool to have an extra just feature on that strap, as well as carrying a pretty long charging cable. And I like the kind of flat 
form factor of it, it feels like maybe it'll be a little bit more durable than our round cables, a little bit more flexible. Who knows if that's the case, but I really do dig the charger. I'm glad someone pointed it out to me because otherwise it would just stay in the box forever, just got tossed with all my other lanyards that I don't use. And now I know that I don't have to use my own USB-C charger. It does come with one. But that's it for this one. Would love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the notification button, or even joining the channel as a member. Don't forget, if you do pick this up on the Woobin website, to use my code UNCOMMON20, which will save you 20% while also helping the channel out. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great one. Take care.